Hi, Dr. Bear here. This is going to be a tutorial on modeling the dynamics of a quantum harmonic oscillator. It builds on a previous tutorial that I gave you. I'll link it below. Without further ado, just a brief review. Here's the uh, Hamiltonian for the quantum harmonic oscillator, parabolic potential, probability distribution in space for the stationary states, and there's these annihilation and creation operators which transition the system between adjacent eigenstates. And we're working in the energy basis where the basis states are these elementary vectors which represent the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. And in this basis we could write the annihilation operator like this and the creation operator like this, the Hamiltonian like this, position and momentum operators. We will look at the time dependent Schrodinger equation because we're modeling dynamics here. The solution here is this equation where we have this time evolution operator acting on the initial state. The time evolution operator is a matrix exponential. We may or may not use this, but just in case I want to, this is the expectation value for some operator. And then we'll play with a globber state because it's a very nice state for a quantum harmonic oscillator that behaves like a classical oscillator state. And to do this, we start with a ground state and act upon it with a displacement operator where this alpha is a displacement parameter and the displacement operator is defined as a matrix exponential like this. Let's go to MATLAB. I have open the script that I provide via GitHub for the previous tutorial that I mentioned. So we're just going to start with this. We have the dynamics, we can calculate the Hamiltonian uh, the position operator here also, line 37. We find eigenstates. We visualize eigenstates. We can just run this really quick. Okay, so here's the second excited state. And now, let's start to do some time dynamics. So, first off, what I'm going to do is define a time scale for the problem. To do that, I pick an energy scale. I'll have E0 be the ground state energy, and we know that formula. It's h bar times omega divided by 2. Now the time scale is related, so let's just label this. Let's add a few time related parameters. Okay, so I've added nt to define the number of time points and a time span of 3, which will go from 0 to 3 times t naught. That's what I'm saying here. So let's define a time vector and we need an initial state, so I'm going to use a technique called the switch case. So we need a variable psi zero case that will be either an integer or a string. For now we'll set it to be one. And so we, we have to specify case one. Case one. So what the switch does is it looks at the value of psi zero case, and if psi zero case is one, then it enters into case one. And if it's two, then it enters into case two. So we can define here what happens in case one. So outside of this switch case, I'll put psi zero. Okay, so we have to modify this for case one. We put the, set the first element to be one, and that gets us the ground state. For case two, let's pick the first excited state, and let's just see how this works. Okay, so this whole section here is all about preparing the initial state. Now we need a time evolution loop, so I just created the skeleton of the loop. Uh, before I fill out the loop, let's make placeholders for time-varying data. So here's a energy basis version of the time-varying state, and here's a position basis version of the same thing. So we'll start by calculating the energy basis time-dependent state. Okay, so now we need to define what this UT is. This is the time evolution operator. And then we're going to convert this to position basis. So there's our calculation. Let's calculate probability densities. Oh, and I'm going to change the name of these. I don't like the zero in here because we're highlighting the fact that these are time-dependent states. That's better. And now we're going to use the code that we placed here previously to do the visualization of the time-dependent states. In the energy basis, I'm going to use bar 3, color, and we'll just put the probability distribution in time and energy basis here. 
I'll comment these out for now and comment this out for now. Also, I think I'm going to switch this so it's subplot one row, two columns, plot one. Okay, didn't like that error, so I have to put in underscore. Try that again. Okay, so let's put in a couple of labels here. I believe the X label will be site, so we'll put that in like that. Oh, nope, that should be the Y label. And then the X label, time step. And what we see here is the system uh, in energy basis is not evolving at all. So that's correct. That's a feature of the Schrodinger equation because it conserves energy. Now let's look at the site basis visualization. Let's use bar 3 color. So I should make this consistent with the first subplot. Let's run that again. Okay, so let's try this. X label is it position? Uh, that should be the Y label. Okay. So again, in this picture, we see there is no uh, no time evolution at all. Um, it's static in time. That's okay. Uh, if you look at it, it looks like the ground state, and then it just remains in the ground state as time goes on. Let's also put in a Z label here really quick. It's probability. We'll also look at a few other ways to visualize this here in a moment. Let's also consider now, we said, well, we can switch this uh, size zero case. Let's make it read two. Let's make this bigger, undock. This so you can see it better. You can see here that we start in the first excited state and things look like they stay constant in position basis as time goes on. And again, since energy is conserved, well, you can see here that it's the we have full probability of occupying the first excited state, and that remains constant as time goes on. Okay, let's try a more interesting case where we actually see some time dynamics. So let's build in a case three. Uh, let's make this more accurate. This is the first excited state, and if you like, we'll move this up here. Here we'll put linear combination. So we're making zero vectors for state A and state B, and then we will put in element one for state A, a one, and then element two, we'll put in a one for state B. That will create the first, uh, the ground state and the first excited state. And here's our superposition. Okay, now let's set this switch to three and see what happens. Okay, now this becomes more interesting. Let's look here at the energy basis first. And you can see that as time goes on, we actually have 50-50 probability of the system being in the zero state or the one state. But in position basis or site basis, you can see that the probabilities for the various positions change in time. It's actually a very nice looking plot. Uh, I think it, we could do better. Another nice way to do the visualization here is the P color. So let's try P color just show you how that goes. So we have the time on the y-axis and then position on the x-axis. We can actually do something nice here. We'll put in the positions for the x-axis and then the, the real times for time step. So I'm just going to dock this again. And with the P color, it's nice to use shading and terp. And we can specify, like I said, the axes. This is actually a n by n matrix, so we're going to take the diag of it. And then that makes us a, co a column vector. I'm going to multiply that by ones. That makes a matrix. And let's try our scaled time vector and let's see how that goes. It actually flipped the axes on me. So this is actually x on the bottom and then time on the y-axis. So let's change that. And if I want to zoom in and make this more interesting, let's set the x, li uh, x limits we'll get rid of this empty space here. And then to make the axes more visible, let's just borrow from above. Could have commented that out, or uncommented that, but here we go. Okay, that's better. Now, we've seen some time dynamics because we, we saw that stationary states, or eigenstates, are stationary. So let's just see that again in summary here. If I set this to case two, we look at the first excited state, constant in time, ground state, constant in time, but 
if we have, again, a linear combination of eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, we get something that's not constant in time. Let's do a globber state or a coherent state. So for this, we add a new parameter. It's the alpha parameter, that, that displacement parameter. For now, let's set it to be zero. Okay, so we've defined here the displacement operator. Let's make the ground state. Here, this is all zero, so that's fine. So now to create our displaced state, we take the D and act on the ground state. Recall that I've set D to zero, so we're actually just going to get the ground state. Uh, I need to set the case to four. And you see, yep, that's the ground state. Now, let's change our alpha parameter so we have some displacement. Let's change it to one. And now you see there's this sinusoidal variation, this oscillation. Let's also try negative one for alpha. So you can see it, the oscillator starts displaced. If we have negative one, well then the displacement switches. We can make it negative 0.5, and you'll see the displacement is less. If we make it one, or negative one again, and, and let's add now a complex part. This happens, let's turn off the real part. And now there's no real part. It starts not displaced, but this imaginary part introduces a velocity. And if we wanted to see more dynamics, why we just push out the time span a little bit, right? And then we can play with these parameters. So let's go back to one and then no imaginary part. And then briefly, let's undock this. And again, we just point out, you see all this, these dynamics here in position basis, but in a time basis, again, because we're doing coherent evolution via the Schrodinger equation, energy is conserved. So these probabilities in time, in energy basis, remain constant. Okay, so that's our demonstration for the quantum harmonic oscillator. Hope you found that illustrative and helpful. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, then please like it, share it, uh, and subscribe to the channel.